You've heard of the human genome, the whole enchilada of genetic information that's encoded in our DNA. But it's more than just genes, it's full of clues to our evolutionary history, our relationships to other animals, and a bunch of stuff that we still haven't figured out. The key ingredients of our DNA are four chemicals, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. These are called bases, and they pair up together to form long chains of base pairs. And the orders of A's, T's, C's, and G's is super important because it dictates whether an organism is a human or a hagfish or something else. Back in 1990, a bunch of scientists decided that if they could figure out the exact sequence of all the base pairs in the human genome, they could cure all the diseases. So they started the Human Genome Project, and researchers from over 20 countries worked for 13 years to do it, and when they were done, they sat back and were like, eh? eh? Because, don't get me wrong, there were surprises there, but they were a little less like, surprise surprises, and more like, oh, didn't expect that kind of surprises. First, it turns out that the human genome has a lot fewer genes, that is, sequences that actually code for proteins that make and do stuff than anybody expected. So I got my biochemistry degree in 2002. Long time ago, I recognized, but not that long ago, and my biology textbook when I was in school said that there were between 80,000 and 100,000 protein coding genes in the human genome. And that was wrong. Really wrong. There are fewer than 30,000. Some less complex animals have more than that, like a water flea has 31,000. Second surprise, not only do we have fewer genes than we thought, but they only make up like 2% of our genome. The project scientists politely referred to the rest as non-coding DNA, which meant they had no idea what the Watson and Cricket was for. A third sort of lame surprise is that sequencing our genome hasn't helped us cure cancer or anything. Which leads geneticists to conclude that our DNA is not the only thing that calls the shots when it comes to how our bodies work. But the Human Genome Project has definitely changed the way that we study genetics. It's given rise to functional and comparative genomics, fields that study the function of genes and how our genome compares to that of other species. And this new research has led scientists to discover that a lot of the non-coding DNA in our genome has good reasons for being there. For instance, it turns out that a lot of our DNA came from viruses that invaded our ancestors' bodies thousands of years ago, and their, their genes just got stuck there, unable to evolve and unable to reinfect their hosts. Which is just like weird, just virus DNA. Also, some of our DNA contains instructions for making body parts that we don't even have anymore. Like our genome hasn't phased out the instructions for growing a tail. During embryonic development, we no longer get the go-ahead to actually grow one, but the directions for making one are still there. So a lot of what we once thought was junk DNA is probably code for stuff that we just don't have anymore. So we're living in an exciting time to study genetics, and I haven't even talked about epigenetics, which is crazy, and some new research into evolutionary developmental biology, which we did a whole Crash Course episode on. And it's all thanks, in part, to having sequenced the human genome. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow. If you have any questions or comments or ideas, you can get in touch with us on Facebook or Twitter, or of course in the YouTube comments below. And if you want to keep learning with us, head to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe.